Hey everyone, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Uh, today, uh, as you can see, it's going to be Splatterhouse, played on the FM Towns Marty. Um, yeah, this is a pretty awesome game, one of the games that uh, a lot of people rave about when it comes to the FM Towns and Marty. Um, and yeah, we should be able to run through this game, hopefully in one swoop. It may take us a couple of continues, but, uh, but we'll see. Uh, believe it or not, I just beat this game for the very first time. Uh, literally like two nights ago. Uh, I, I practiced it on stream, beat it once, and then ran through it like three more times right after that. So we should theoretically not really have any troubles going through the game, assuming I take the, the path I'm well practiced at. Uh, and, you know, it was very far in that version. Uh, so it's nice to finally be able to say I've, I've been able to complete the original arcade Splatterhouse. Because uh, that's basically what this is. And... Uh, so yeah, Splatterhouse is a pretty cool franchise. It's usually known for its blood and guts, as you can see. There's a lot of blood splattering. If you look in the, uh, you know, the artwork and the backgrounds, you can see, you know, organs and blood and and more guts. And there's a lot of that in this game. That's uh, one of the big things that people like about the Splatterhouse games. Is uh, they're a little creepy. They're a little. Um, they might make some people squeamish. Maybe not so much today, because I think a lot of people are desensitized to that sort of stuff. But back when this came out, especially, it was just like, damn, look at that blood and the guts. Uh, keep in mind, this was before uh, the original Mortal Kombat. And um, prior to Splatterhouse, there weren't really that many games that featured a lot of uh, blood and guts and so forth in their games. Aside from maybe Chiller, the arcade game. Uh, outside of that, not a whole lot of it. Um, so this was definitely seen as uh, edgy back in the day. Nowadays, uh, it still looks actually really cool in many regards. Uh, and that was continuing with Splatterhouses 2 and 3, uh, both which also look really cool uh, if you're into that. If you're a gore hound when it comes to your, uh, your video games. So uh, the gameplay in this, uh, this game is actually really simple. If you've never played a Splatterhouse game before, you walk left, you walk right, um, you can jump by pressing A, and you could do smaller jumps too by just tapping the button. Uh, and then you can also obviously duck, and you can do a ducking kick. Uh, having weapons like these typically will kill guys in one hit for the most part. And uh, Swatterhouse is a, a very pattern oriented game. And uh, it's actually a really tough game when you first play it. But um, when you put more time into it and you play through the levels again and again, you figure out the patterns. Uh, it's actually not that hard once you know the patterns. It's the kind of game where when you know the patterns, you can just tear right through it without any problems. But figuring out the patterns is the tricky part. And that's, uh, that's what took me the longest time trying to get through this game. Is I just couldn't figure out the levels and the boss patterns and so forth. Uh, but once you get it, you, you could theoretically go through the whole game without taking a single hit if you play it right and you play disciplined. Uh, there's also one more move I didn't talk about uh, aside from these weapons, and it's the slide attack on the ground. Uh, apparently other players have found uses for it. I have not, and um, so you probably aren't going to see me use it except for demonstration purposes. Um, if I get to a part where there's no enemies, I'll try to do the slide so you guys can see what it looks like. Uh, the slide was also in Swatterhouse 2. Now, Swatterhouse 2 was not a arcade game, whereas the original Swatterhouse was. And, uh, Swatterhouse 2 was exclusive to the Sega Genesis and Sega Mega Drive. And, uh, but it featured pretty much the same kind of gameplay as this. Uh, I forgot what types of games you, you, you call these. They're not really beat-em-ups. They're, it's, it's kind of like... Uh, Splatterhouse is like an evolution of games like, uh, arcade games like Kung Fu Master, or Kung Fu on the NES, which is what many of you guys might recognize, or, um, the early Fist, Fist of the North Star games, uh, aka Black Belt in North America on Sega Master System, uh, Vigilante, it's kind of in that same sub-genre of, you know, side-scrollers, uh, arcade side-scrollers. It's not really a beat-em-up. Because really, there's not a whole lot of beating up. You're, I mean, you're not really. There's no combos. It's just quite basic gameplay, actually. I'm literally just mashing the button, and this is exactly how the arcade version was. So these knives here, you can literally just punch them, 
And this guy right here, I have the best of luck when I try to just stay back and do this. Just like that. So again, this game, it's all about knowing exactly how to handle each, each screen, basically. And on that screen, I just find it easiest to just sit literally on the right and uh, just punch things as they come towards me. So yeah, I wouldn't really classify this as a beat-em-up, but it is a, a side-scroller. Uh, and like I said, it's sort of like an evolution of those early side-scroller um, games. Like, again, Vig Vigilante, Kung Fu Master, stuff like that. So now you've got a shotgun here, and I, what I want to do is actually save the shotgun. And try to pick off all these enemies from a distance. Now you got to watch out for this wall here, this... Uh, that will actually hurt you and it can kill you. So what's kind of funny is these dogs will actually try to like slurp up the guts of those purplish enemies I killed. So that'll allow you to get your first hit on those dogs. And these little puddle things, you don't want to walk into them. And if I do, it's going to be really problematic because I really need this shotgun. I'm going to be doing what's called the shotgun trick on this boss that's coming up. And I have a really hard time trying to beat this boss without using the trick. So basically what you can do is, uh, you can only carry one item at a time, but it, you'll slowly push an item forward as you pick up another item. And so what you can do is, there's actually a second shotgun that's going to up appear here. Let me try to kill these guys first. And there it is. This guy I need to shoot. But you can literally just keep tapping down and the shotguns will keep moving forward with you. And this guy is just such a pain in the ass. I have no idea how to beat him uh, without using the shotgun trick. I actually magically beat him once uh, on stream without the shotgun trick. And I think it's just because I had d I did so well in the previous levels. If you do well in the previous level, you'll actually get some extra health. So your health can actually go higher than the default four. So now I have five hearts. So every hit takes away a heart. So I think I've had up to six hearts. So it's like, you know, I think I had like six hearts when I got to him. And that's kind of how I was able to beat him without the shotgun trick. So don't fall down those holes. What's, what's kind of cool about Splatterhouse is that it's got, um, you know, alternate pathways, basically. And uh, one of the tricks to beating this game is finding sort of like the ideal path for you. You know, some paths are going to be easier for some people than others. And I have a very specific path I like to take uh, to sort of like guarantee success as I play through this game. So right here, you need to keep jumping over uh, these swirling blades. Just back and forth like that. Very basic stuff. Look, even the bats have blood. When you, when you punch them to the ground, they like sort of fall apart. Look at that. <laughs> so yeah, what's actually kind of cool about being able to beat this game now and let's play in it and um, I, I should be able to do a let's play of Splatterhouse 2 now. I can focus on that finally. It's years and years overdue. There are going to be some guys that smash through uh, the mirrors here. So what I find, e he just did the slide attack. So this is the slide right here. Again, I don't really use it. And what I like to do is try to punch these guys right as they come out to get a free hit. They take three hits. Bam, just like that. And then what I'll try to do is just jump kick them from there. Uh, but yeah, Swatterhouse 2. I actually did a Let's Play of Swatterhouse 3 several years ago for the Sega Genesis. Uh, if you guys want to check that out, feel free to, uh, just check out, uh, my Sega Genesis, uh, playlist, and you'll see that there, or my Let's Plays playlist, or I might even link it in this, uh, this description box, so feel free to check this description box first, uh, for a Splatterhouse 3 Let's Play. Uh, so that basically just leaves, uh, part two. Uh, and of course, I'll probably, since I've beaten the arcade version, I'll probably eventually go back and do the, uh, PC Engine version of Splatterhouse. Since it is uh, quite different, it's actually uh, interesting to see the differences. It was censored in some ways. Uh, other ways, it was not censored. 
But yeah, Splatterhouse 2, a uh, personal favorite of mine from back in the day. I played it a lot in the late 90s. And uh, so now that I am able to do a Let's Play of this one, a uh, full completion, mind you. I was going to do a Let's Play of this anyway, but now that I can actually finish it, uh, I kind of want to move the, the priority on Splatterhouse 2 up so I can finish that and basically have all three done. And then maybe for Halloween, I can do one Paco gra Graffiti for the NES or something. I meant to do that last Halloween, but I, I did not. So this is uh, this is about halfway through the game, maybe maybe a little bit farther. Splatterhouse is not a very long game. You got to keep in mind this was an arcade game, and arcade games were typically twenty to thirty minutes long uh, in one sitting if you were able to just plow right through them. Some of them were even shorter than that, like ten or fifteen minutes, depending on the game. Uh, the thing about these games is that they took you a long time to master them. So while the games are only twenty to thirty minutes long on a good run. Um, it took you hours and hours and hours and hours to get to the point to where you could actually beat it. Um, even just for the first time. I mean, that's not even talking without continuing and things like that. So, and as far as I can tell, it took me years to be able to, uh, actually beat this game for the first time. To really dedicate the time to, to learn it and, uh, and it finally happened. So here we are doing a actual let's play of it. So this part's kind of interesting. Um, it took me a while to find the rhythm here, but so these like little platforms, they actually push you forward. You're like, you slide off of them, basically. So this hand right here, I want to punch, and then I want to just keep moving, but push in the opposite direction. And that hand right there, if you literally just keep holding forward, you can just skip it 100% of the time. And that part gave me absolute hell when I was trying to learn this level. I kept trying to punch the hand, but I would slide off into the pit. The pit here, you don't die instantly, but you do take damage. So, just hold in the opposite direction. Holding in the opposite direction basically slows you down, and I like to take the top path here. Actually, actually, what I meant to do is take the bottom path. I'm an idiot. It doesn't really matter. I can get back to the bottom path from this screen. These little uh, specters, you can actually uh, hit them. They drop skulls. So we're just going to go ahead and fall right down. Because I find uh, the bottom set of screens to be easier. So again, it's kind of about finding your own rhythm. And these guys, I find it safer to try to jump kick them. If you punch them like I did, they have a uh, decent reach. So what's going to happen is you're going to try to punch them, but they're they're probably going to outreach you and hit you instead. So this part's kind of interesting too. You've got this uh, caped guy. He basically just bounces back and forth every time you hit him. And you want to hit him before he does his move. His move basically revives the uh, the zombies on the floor. And there's going to be another zombie coming out of here soon. So the pattern, you basically do this back and forth, and then another zombie eventually comes out. Oh, it didn't. Huh, interesting. Okay, so I have another choice here. I can either go down or up. I prefer up. I find the bottom path uh, from this part to be really tough uh, to get through consistently. But this room, I might be able to get through without taking a hit or two. This is still a tough room. I mean, this is actually getting close to the end of the game. Uh, we're, we're literally just two levels out from the very end of the game. Again, it's not a very long game. Especially if you get through it, um... You know, say, without continuing or something like that. And what I like to do is just push forward. There, we're already latched in. We can't take any more damage. Because it knew you were at the exit, and it was basically forcing me into the exit. I had I lost control. So even if an enemy touched me at that point, um, they couldn't have hurt me, which is great. So a good little trick on that part. So this is a fairly notorious boss when it comes to Splatterhouse. That's your girlfriend, apparently. 
She turns into this uh, hideous beast. And it's, it could be a tough boss when you don't know the patterns. So there's actually three cycles to this boss. The first cycle and the second cycle. Oops, I'm a dumbass. Why don't I do that? You want to stay closer to the middle of the screen and try to hit the boss on the way down. As you see. Your hitbox is actually quite large uh, on your character, so... And some of the enemies. So you can get away with literally just standing on the ground and punching as they come down. Kind of like that. You really want to be away from that, that enemy's attack. It is just... it's long. It's got a big hitbox, too. It'll, it'll damage you even if it doesn't look like it's damaging you. Now, in this third cycle, you want to be up close, and this is where knowing the pattern really comes into play. Let's just watch. One. Two. Oh, he attacked twice in a row! See, that was my fault. I should have waited for the boss to actually lunge forward. He does, like, this, these baby lunges, basically. So now we got to do the whole fight over again. Start from cycle one. I don't really recommend staying on one side of the screen. I find it easier or more manageable to stay near the center of the screen. Kind of like this. Because the boss will typically jump over you like that. Or sometimes it'll just jump right towards the middle. But in that case, you're already there to, to punch it. And I find it easy, uh, helpful to be jumping as uh, the boss does the attack. It allows me to clear it. If I need that, there's extra few pixels to, to clear it. All right, so let's get close. Not close enough for the boss to attack, of course. See, baby lunges. I failed. Yeah, see, I was I was getting a little risky there. I was like, well, I've got extra health. I can just sort of tank. But one of the problems with this game is that uh, you have very little invulnerability time after you take a hit. So you might have four, uh, four hearts, but, you know, you could be dead in literally like five seconds. Um, you'll just take one hit, bam. Two hits, bam. Three hits. That's... You literally have, like, a frame or two of uh, invincibility time in this game. Maybe, maybe a couple more, but it's... Yeah. Alright, last cycle. Let's make it happen this time. Just like that. See, that's where knowing the patterns uh, is extremely important in this game. Especially that boss. That boss gave me so much trouble. And what's really frustrating about this game, when you're trying to learn it, when you're trying to practice it, is when you get a game over, you've got to do the whole level over again. And so, if you're not that comfortable with that level to begin with, <laughs> it could be total hell, basically. Now, this level's not too bad to have to continue over and over because it's literally just one long screen, and then you're at the boss, and then that's it. And then you're on to the final level. This is a pretty tricky level, though. You got these bubbles, or... that sort of appear. You definitely want to try to attack them as quick as possible. Otherwise, they form these little guys that hop around, and when they latch onto you... Just like that, it can get overwhelming very, very quickly. So you want to try to kill these bubbles... Um, as, as soon as they come out. But you also don't want to rush too much. You want to kind of like, just watch where they're going.
because their patterns are erratic. They're just completely random, it seems. There is no rhythm or rhyme to the patterns of the bubbles on this part, as far as I can tell. I mean, I've had to continue on this level quite a few times, and so, of all the times I've had to play this level, including the times where I've just beaten it on my first try, the bubbles have always been random. Whereas most other parts of this game, uh, there are no random elements. You know, it's just 100% the same every time you play it. So again, just really just take your time. And if those little guys appear, what you can do is uh, literally just sit and just punch them as uh, they, they jump. Now, mashing on this boss doesn't really seem to do any good, but what I found is on the final boss, mashing actually works. Oh, I didn't realize there was one there. So now we have to do the whole level over again, because we... Well, we didn't game over. But uh, on this level, I think you go back to the beginning anyway, basically. Because again, like I said, it's just one long screen and then the boss. Oh, I missed! What? Dude, come on! See, this is where it starts to suck, is... ...when you start to get overwhelmed like this, and we're gonna die. Yeah. Wow, game over. I wasn't expecting to get a game over on this level. But, I mean, that's what happens. Uh, again, no discernible patterns for the bubbles. It's... it's difficult, so... So, you basically put in your initials, and then you get to continue afterwards. And, from what I can tell, it's... Pretty much unlimited continues. I'm, I'm pretty sure like the first time I beat this game, I think I continued like 20 times. So, I don't think there's a limit to the, the amount of times you can continue, which is nice. That would have been uh, quite frustrating uh, if you had a continue limit, and some games do. So, Raiden, for instance, on the uh, P uh, FM Towns actually has a continue limit. You only get five continues in that game. So, if you want to practice those later levels, well, you better be damn good at those first, first few, you know what I mean? So basically, this level's easy if you're able to take out these bubbles right away, but it's really, really hard if you don't, and uh, a bunch of those guys just start appearing, and bouncing at you like crazy. Because the problem is, they latch onto you, and when they're latched onto you, they do damage. And when they do damage, it... You know, there's a little bit of recoil, basically. You can't... You come out of, like, whatever attack you're doing... And, like, this guy was came from behind. Oh, see again? Random pattern for that bubble. I wasn't expecting the bubble to go all the way across the screen. So, it's- it's tough. I mean, after I beat this game for the first time, I ran through it again. I think I literally beat this level on my first try. After beating the game for the first time. I mean, that's how really inconsistent things can be on this level. And Splatterhouse is the kind of game that uh, is not kind to slop. If you're a sloppy player, if you get lazy, Splatterhouse will punish you very, very quickly. Like that hit I took, uh, that was my fault. I was sloppy. I shouldn't have taken that hit. 
but because I was uh, not playing smart, you know, playing a little too fast, you can play methodically quick in Splatterhouse, but, like, again, right there, I tried going in for the kill, that was dumb. I wasn't patient. I should have just stayed back, let one of the bubbles hatch. You got an extra life, at least. This boss takes a lot of hits, too. I mean, it's not just a gimme. So... See? That was dumb again. That was my fault. And again. At this point, I might as well just take uh, take another hit or two and just die and start over. Yes, we've almost spent uh, ten minutes on this level alone, so it's kind of like... If you get hung up on a spot like this, the game could take you 30, 40, 50 minutes to beat... Uh, ...on a single run. But... If you don't get hung up on anything, it, you can literally beat the game in like 20 to 25 minutes. Maybe even less, to be honest with you. Because I'm, I'm, I'm not exactly a speedrunner, you know? So like, I don't know any major shortcuts, things like that. Staying close in like this really seems to help, because you can destroy the bubbles as they come out. Kind of like this. I, when you want to get away? This actually hurts you, right there. Very reminiscent of the first boss in Splatterhouse 2. When you defeat the first boss in Splatterhouse 2, he explodes with a big puddle of slime, and the slime will hurt you. So I got some health back at least, and this is the final stage. There are no actual attackable enemies uh, on this level. It's basically an obstacle course of fiery objects. So this actually isn't that hard if you're good with uh, platforming and dodging. Just take your time. But the final boss, you really need to be on point if uh, you want to take him out. You probably don't want to jump until you see some uh, flaming logs. So the big threat uh, are this guy's hands and arms and flying pieces of rubble that come out. And uh, the pieces that fall from the sky, they just seem to be kind of randomized. But again, on this boss, you can actually mash the button. And, uh, he goes down to his next form faster. So for the hands, you literally just move back and forth. And I think there's four, maybe five cycles to this boss. So that's cycle number three. And then the next two cycles are going to be a little bit trickier because his hands are going to come out at the same time. So this part, you just want to take it nice and easy and jump. That way, we were uh, talking on stream about how this guy looks like Marilyn Manson. It's kind of funny, actually, when you think of it. The eyeballs and everything. <laughs> and that's it. We just beat the game. You know you've beaten the boss when you get 100,000 points. So my score just skyrocketed. It's the, the single most largest scoring um, fight in the game. Nothing else in the game gives you that anywhere close to that many points.
So if I beat the game straight through without continuing, I would probably have about 250,000 points. So I'd probably get about 150k on the way in here and then get an extra 100k for beating the boss. So it's funny, it took us like 10 tries on that previous boss, but the final boss we beat on our first try. Uh, the final boss isn't that hard, you just have to be disciplined like with the rest of the game. Again, Splatterhouse is the kind of game where if you're not disciplined, you just get wrecked. If you are disciplined, like I could have just sat there and tried to mash on the boss really quickly, but I would have gotten killed on, on the last cycle. Um, because the hands would have gotten me as I was trying to punch the boss. So, it's kind of like, dodge the hands, then punch. Wait for the hands to come back up, dodge those, then punch again. You know, it's like, there's a rhythm and rhyme to... Uh, both Spider House 1 and 2, you know, part 3 not so much because it was more of a beat-em-up. Um, but Spider Houses 1 and 2, they're very difficult games at first, but once you figure out the patterns, and as long as you have discipline, you should be able to get through them uh, very, very consistently without any problems at all. So... But yeah, that's Splatterhouse, guys, for uh, the FM Towns, uh, played on the FM Towns Marty. And this is basically, from what I understand, a perfect conversion of the original arcade game of the same name. So this is basically the arcade version of Splatterhouse. And uh, a couple of the FM Towns arcade to home conversions were pretty much flawless ports as well. The FM Towns was pretty good for that. Um, to, a, to a certain point, you know, once, a, once an arcade game became a little too much for the FM Towns, you know, you started to see some cutbacks, like with Viewpoint on the FM Towns, or some of the Sega Super Scalar games, but... Games like, uh, Splatterhouse, Flying Shark, Twin Cobra, all that stuff are pretty much perfect on, uh, the FM Towns, which is really cool. So... I hope you guys enjoyed this video, I will definitely... Uh, be considering uh, trying to practice uh, Splatterhouse 2 to Let's Play. That way we've got the whole trilogy down. And then uh, maybe for Halloween, I'll try to do uh, the Turbo Graphics version of Splatterhouse and uh, Wampaku Graffiti. So if you guys would like to see those, post a comment below and let me know. Um, and that's pretty much it. There's not really a whole lot else to the ending. There's just one more little screen that pops up and then uh, that's pretty much it. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna go ahead and just wrap things up here. Splatterhouse on the FM Towns Marty. Uh, pretty fun game, a little frustrating if you're new to it, but uh, it's, it's a classic for very different reasons than, uh, than what you find with some other games from the same era. So, uh, all right, guys, I'm out. Thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. Uh, for everybody else, uh, thanks for the usual support. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. So until then, take it easy.